The series begins with Cheng Yao, a struggling lawyer, attending a meeting with a sleazy client and her boss. Instead of focusing on her skills, they seem more interested in her looks. During the meeting, a woman offers Cheng Yao 10,000 yuan per hour for her time. Then, the older man tries to touch her, which makes Cheng Yao furious. She spits her drink in his face and storms out, quitting the job interview on the spot. Later on, Cheng Yao notices a handsome man driving a Bentley, catching her attention. Not long after, she lands a job at a well-known law firm and rents an apartment. To her surprise, the same handsome man she saw earlier turns out to be her neighbor. Although he's wealthy, he lives in the same modest building. When they arrive at the apartment at the same time, they argue over who rented it first. Both of them show identical rental contracts, realizing they had rented the apartment on the same day. Desperate to claim the space, Chen Yao jokingly says her hair entered first, but the handsome man has already gotten inside. They call the landlord to settle the argument. He explains that he's going through a divorce, and they each rented the apartment from different sides of the splitting couple. Cheng Yao tries to intimidate the handsome man by bringing up her powerful boss, Qian Hong. The landlord suggests they share the apartment, and even asks Cheng Yao to represent him in his divorce. Realizing Cheng Yao is struggling financially, the handsome man offers to pay her two months' rent in exchange for a three-day stay, after which they can decide what to do. Cheng Yao agrees and hands him a list of house rules, wondering why someone so rich would choose to live in a shared apartment. She also warns him about his profession, saying there could be legal and personal consequences for his actions. In response, he threatens to sue her for defamation. Later, Cheng Yao notices the apartment is arranged in a strange way that makes her feel like it's haunted. She overhears the handsome man giving legal advice on a video call and is surprised by how knowledgeable he is. When he realizes she was eavesdropping, he confronts her, asking if she had been listening in. Cheng Yao scolds him, suggesting he should get a proper job and earn an honest living. As he leaves for the night, she starts cleaning the apartment, which irritates him so much that he demands she clean every inch of it. In a later conversation with someone named Wu Jun, Cheng Yao finds out the handsome man is actually Qian Hong, the co-founder of Jun Hong Law Firm, the same firm where Cheng Yao just got hired. She also learns that he suffers from insomnia, which explains all the gifts in his apartment meant to help him sleep better. While Cheng Yao is busy cleaning, she sings loudly, which disturbs Qian Hang's sleep. The next morning, Qian Hung wakes up feeling good, but quickly becomes annoyed when he sees the makeshift partitions Cheng Yao set up in their shared apartment. Cheng Yao starts her new job and is shocked to discover that her boss, Qian Hung, is known for firing his assistants frequently. Her colleagues even show her his office, which is filled with strange, threatening gifts from upset clients, like a rubber snake, a knife, and even a skull. To her horror, Qian Hung walks in, and Cheng Yao realizes that he is the same handsome man she had lectured the day before. Cheng Yao confides in her friend, Tan Ying, about everything that happened. Later, she hears strange noises coming from Qian Hang's room, which is decorated like a haunted house. When a stool breaks with a loud crash, Qian Hung comes to check on the noise. Cheng Yao tries to stop him outside by making excuses, but Qian Hung goes to his room and suddenly screams. Moments later, Cheng Yao finds herself kicked out of the apartment with her suitcase in hand. Qian Hung doesn't try to stop her. Instead, he offers to call her a taxi. Cheng Yao accepts the ride, first going to a hotel, but later she decides to save money by staying at her office. As Cheng Yao stands outside Qian Hang's office, she wonders who would ever dare to enter. She sneaks into the storage room filled with old files and decides to sleep there. She makes herself comfortable using camping gear and stacks of files as a pillow, falling fast asleep. Meanwhile, Qian Hung is having a hard time sleeping, tossing and turning in bed. At midnight, the cuckoo clock goes off, startling him awake. He's furious and blames Cheng Yao for disturbing his sleep. Cheng Yao has a nightmare, dreaming that a killer is lurking in the office, ready to attack her. She thinks these nightmares are inevitable, given how many frightening things she's surrounded by in the storage room. She wakes up thirsty and goes to get water, only to find Qian Hung still in the office, working late. Qian Hung notices that the lights are on, but doesn't see Cheng Yao. Suspicious, he goes back to his work while Cheng Yao quietly returns to her makeshift bed. The next day, 
Qian Hung visits a psychiatrist recommended by Wu Jun, however. The psychiatrist seems more in need of help than Qian Hung. The doctor advises him to relax, stop stressing about work, and mentions that his constant rush to succeed is causing his sleep problems. Qian Hung didn't want to visit in the first place and ends up arguing with the psychiatrist. He worries that people at work will think he has mental health issues, which could damage his reputation. Back at the office, Cheng Yao struggles to stay awake, exhausted from her sleepless night. Qian Hung arrives just as Cheng Yao is trying to hide her dark circles with makeup. A colleague teases her about aging faster due to sleep deprivation, adding that no one working with her gets any rest. Later, Qian Hung notices Cheng Yao's attempt to cover her tiredness with makeup. During a meeting, Cheng Yao fails to contribute to the discussion about a divorce case, as the other lawyers had already gone over the details. Qian Hung criticizes her, telling her she's too focused on her appearance and should spend more time studying. He warns her that if she doesn't improve, he'll fire her. While Cheng Yao is fast asleep, she is suddenly woken by strange noises. It's 5 a.m., and she quickly gathers her things and heads to the office. To her surprise, Qian Hung is already there, making coffee. He looks startled to see her so early, and Cheng Yao, try to play it cool, says, the early bird catches the worm. She confidently tells him she's determined to work hard and secure her place in the office. Qian Hung comments on her dark circles, clearly noticing her lack of sleep, and then hides his own tired eyes behind sunglasses. He mentions seeing her come out of the record room, but Cheng Yao quickly covers it up by saying she was there studying. As the rest of the team arrives, Wu Jun, who has just returned from vacation, makes his entrance. He's another big boss like Qian Hung, but much more approachable and friendly. He greets Cheng Yao warmly, wishing her luck on her first days at the firm. Afterward, Wu Jun heads to Qian Hang's office, urging him to seek help for his insomnia. Qian Hung brushes it off, but Wu Jun insists, wondering why Qian Hung keeps hiding his dark circles. Then Qian Hung, changing the subject, asks Wu Jun why he hired Cheng Yao, hinting that it might be because she shares the same last name as his old university crush. He even jokes that Cheng Yao might be her sister. Later that evening, Cheng Yao waits for Qian Hung to leave so she can sneak in some sleep. However, he's working overtime. After noticing her around the office, Qian Hung quietly gathers his things and heads out. As soon as he leaves, Cheng Yao sets up a makeshift bed and falls asleep almost immediately. Suspicious, Qian Hung returns, heading straight to the storage room, where he finds Cheng Yao sleeping soundly. He wakes her up, and Cheng Yao, clearly caught, pleads for mercy. She asks for just two more days to stay there and promises she'll find a place to rent. She explains that she can't afford a hotel and even praises Qian Hang's dedication, wondering how he manages to work so hard without sleep. Feeling desperate for rest himself, Qian Hung agrees and leaves, but moments later, he returns, feeling sorry for her. He offers her the use of his bathroom for half an hour. Grateful, Cheng Yao goes with him back to his apartment, which looks exactly as she left it. She freshens up and sincerely thanks him for letting her use the bathroom. Noticing that Qian Hung doesn't seem to cook for himself, Cheng Yao assumes he must have some impressive cooking skills. Wanting to repay his kindness, she decides to cook for him, making a bit of noise in the process. As she works, she starts singing, and to her surprise, her soft singing acts like a lullaby for Qian Hung who falls asleep almost instantly. The next morning, Qian Hung wakes up astonished to realize he slept through the night, something that rarely happens for him. He feels rested for the first time in a while, amazed that the sounds of Cheng Yao's cooking and singing helped him relax so much. When he looks around, he sees Cheng Yao fast asleep on his sofa, exhausted from all the work she's been doing. She wakes up and quickly apologizes explaining that she had meant to leave but drifted off because of the calming sound of the rain and wind. Qian Hung is surprised that someone could fall asleep so easily just from the sound of raindrops. The next morning, Cheng Yao arrives at the office and gets a case file. She works very hard on it, impressing three of her colleagues who invite her to join their group. The following day, Qian Hung struggles with his insomnia again. To help himself sleep, he plays the sound of rain and even bangs some kitchen utensils, but it doesn't work. Desperate for sleep, he hires a housekeeper and asks her to make noise in the kitchen while working. However, even with all the commotion, he still can't sleep. 
Frustrated, the housekeeper quits and leaves. Feeling defeated, Qian Hung goes to the office and finds Cheng Yao there, making noodles and singing to herself. The sound of her voice instantly puts Qian Hung to sleep. Later, Wu Jun announces a welcome party for the new employees and says everyone can bring their family members. He then approaches Cheng Yao, asking her to invite her sister to the event as well. In the next scene, Qian Hung confides in Wu Jun, explaining that Cheng Yao's singing helps him sleep. He decides to hire her to work at his home. He sends a message to Cheng Yao, but she's out having lunch at a restaurant. Qian Hung also goes to the same restaurant and asks her to be his personal assistant, insisting that she come back to his house. At the welcome party, Wu Jun cleverly manages to get Cheng Yao's sister, Cheng Shi's, phone number. He sends her a friend request, which she quickly accepts. Meanwhile, Qian Hung, desperate for sleep, calls Cheng Yao and makes up an excuse about a blocked kitchen pipe to get her to come back. But Cheng Yao hangs up on him. Frustrated, Qian Hung shows up at the party and joins in on the games. Cheng Yao ends up drinking too much during one of the games. As a result, Qian Hung has to drag her out to his car. During the drive, Qian Hung warns Cheng Yao not to throw up in his car. Unfortunately, Cheng Yao vomits all over him and the car, making a mess of his favorite vehicle. Furious, Qian Hung grabs her and puts her into a box, planning to record a video of her to establish an oral contract. He declares that because she dirted his car, she will now work as his personal life assistant. Cheng Yao, still in a daze, says nothing. In the next scene, Qian Hung takes the box home, and Cheng Yao stumbles out of it, falling onto Qian Hung and clumsily grabbing at his face. Annoyed, Qian Hung warns her that he'll deduct her salary for this. The next morning, Qian Hung wakes up and reminds Cheng Yao that she humiliated him the night before. He shows her a list of bills and the video he recorded, threatening to use it to blackmail her. Upset, Cheng Yao listens as Qian Hung gives her another option. If she doesn't want to pay the compensation, she must become his full-time life assistant. With no choice, Cheng Yao agrees to his contract and moves into Qian Hung's house. That night, Qian Hung asks Qing Yao to cook for him so he can sleep, but instead, she orders food. This frustrates Qian Hung, and he insists that she stop ordering and start cooking for him. Qing Yao reluctantly prepares the meal, but this time, Qian Hung can't fall asleep because she isn't singing while cooking. Qing Yao finishes making the food and leaves it for him, but Qian Hung, unable to sleep, doesn't eat it. Meanwhile, Qing Yao is angry that she went through the trouble of cooking, only for Qian Hung to fall asleep without touching the meal. The next evening, as Cheng Yao is leaving work, she sees two men trying to take Qian Hung away. Thinking they are kidnapping him, she rushes over and sprays them with pepper spray. But then Qian Hung calms her down, explaining that these men are actually his mother's bodyguards sent to bring him home. When they arrive at his family home, Qian Hung finds his mother pretending to be sick so she can spend more time with him. She acts overly dramatic, but Qian Hung sees right through her act and decides to leave. Meanwhile, Wu Jun is reminiscing about his college days and how he fell in love with Cheng Shi. He remembers a time when he fainted while jogging behind her and she took him to the hospital, even giving him a chocolate that became his favorite brand. When Qian Hung returns home, he is surprised to find that Cheng Yao has already prepared dinner. He gets angry and tells her that she must cook only when he orders. If not, he threatens to throw her out of the house. On the other side, Wu Jun takes Cheng Shi out for dinner. He suggests that she join his law firm, but Cheng Shi declines his offer. After dinner, Wu Jun drinks too much. When Cheng Shi drives him home, he drunkenly spills his feelings, telling her she doesn't need to fear her ex-husband anymore because he can take revenge on him. Then he kisses Cheng Shi and promptly passes out. The next morning, Wu Jun wakes up with no memory of the night before. He notices Cheng Shi's hair on the bed and starts to worry that they might have been intimate. He assumes she paid him for it, seeing 500 yuan on his bedside table. Later at the office, Wu Jun hides his face and confesses to Qian Hung that he spent the night with a client but can't remember anything. He mentions finding the money, which makes Qian Hung tease him about selling his body for 500 yuan. In response, Wu Jun starts to blackmail Qian Hung, threatening to expose his insomnia. Qian Hung retorts that he'll tell everyone Wu Jun sold himself for 500 yuan. The two begin to playfully snatch each other's phones. Watching this playful exchange, 
Cheng Yao feels happy to see her usually grumpy boss showing a lighter side with a friend. At home, Qian Hung spends a long time sitting in the washroom. Cheng Yao, watching from outside, worries that he might have a constipation problem. However, Qian Hung is actually there because his friend Wu Jun jokingly told him that he often falls asleep while sitting on the toilet. After 40 minutes, Qian Hung realizes that Wu Jun was just teasing him. Finally, he comes out of the washroom and goes back to his room for a bit. After some time, he actually needs to use the washroom again and finds a comfortable toilet seat cover installed there. When he comes out, Cheng Yao tells him she put it there for him and even hands him some medicine for constipation. Annoyed, Qian Hung scolds her, saying she should not interfere in his personal life. Later that night, Cheng Yao stays up studying a case, but she's also secretly watching Qian Hung. She wants to uncover his dark secret. Around midnight, Qian Hung gets up and leaves his room, prompting Cheng Yao to follow him. Knowing she's behind him, Qian Hung intentionally starts jogging to tire her out. Cheng Yao struggles to keep up, becoming exhausted as she chases him. When Qian Hung finally stops, he scolds her and tells her to go home. However, he surprises her by giving her her first law case, which makes Cheng Yao very happy. The next day, as they wait for their client, Qian Hung and Cheng Yao are excited. Soon, a very famous celebrity arrives, someone whose dramas Cheng Yao loves to watch on TV. The celebrity has a divorce case and explains that her husband misused her fame to boost his business. Now, she wants to uncover all his hidden assets and ensure she gets an equal share of their property. In the next scene, Qian Hung heads to his room to focus on his work. Meanwhile, outside, Cheng Yao begins cooking and humming a cheerful song. The sound of her singing makes Qian Hung feel drowsy, so he steps outside and tells her to stop cooking and singing for now since he still has work to finish. He asks her to continue after half an hour. Once he completes his tasks, Qian Hung asks Cheng Yao to cook for him and to sing a song while she does it. As soon as she starts singing, he quickly falls asleep. Later that night, Qian Hung wakes up feeling hungry. He goes to the fridge, takes out the food, and starts eating. After finishing his meal, he heads back to his room but notices that Cheng Yao has fallen asleep at her desk while working on her case. He gently wakes her up and tells her she can ask him any questions she has about the case, even the silly ones. Excited, she grabs her notebook and begins jotting down everything. The next day, the celebrity client comes to Qian Hang's office for a consultation. He advises her to wait a few months before filing for divorce, explaining that her husband is going through a tough time with his business. If the business suffers, she might lose part of the money she could receive from their property. Hearing this, the celebrity looks very sad. After Qian Hung leaves, Mrs. Wang confides in Cheng Yao about her life. She shares how quickly she fell in love with her husband and married him without thinking about her career. Sadly, she later discovered that he had married her to help his business, wanting to take advantage of her fame. Cheng Yao feels a deep sadness hearing this story. When Xian Hung returns home, he tells Cheng Yao that she will now have to cook for him every day and hum a song while doing so. In exchange, he offers her the chance to ask him two questions about the case. However, when she asks her questions, he simply tells her to shut up. Later, during dinner together, Cheng Yao expresses to Qian Hung that she has developed an emotional attachment to Mrs. Wang. However, Qian Hung scolds her, saying she should not get involved in the personal lives of clients, as it is unprofessional. His harshness makes Cheng Yao feel hurt, and she leaves the table feeling sad. On the other side, Wu Jun learns that Cheng Shi and her sister, Cheng Yao, are planning to visit an amusement park the next day. Wu Jun wishes to go to the park with Cheng Shi, not with Cheng Yao. He quickly rushes to find Qian Hung and tells him about a meeting for the Lawyers Association happening tomorrow. Qian Hung isn't interested in going, but Wu Jun convinces him. Wu Jun explains that both a male and female lawyer need to attend, so he suggests that Qian Hung should bring Cheng Yao along. When Cheng Yao gets home, Qian Hung tells her there is an event for the Lawyers Association today and they need to leave by 9 o'clock. Cheng Yao cancels her plans with Cheng Shi, which makes Cheng Shi a bit sad since she was excitedly waiting for her outside the amusement park. Luckily, Wu Jun arrives to spend time with her instead. Meanwhile, at the event, Qian Hung is furious to discover that it is not a professional meeting but a matchmaking event for single lawyers. Upset, he calls Wu Jun to complain, 
but Wu Jun quickly hangs up the phone. As the matchmaking begins, many girls approach Qian Hung to talk, but he criticizes their looks, which makes him very unpopular at the gathering. In the next scene, there's a rowing competition. A boy wants to team up with Cheng Yao, but Qian Hung insists she should partner with him. We see Cheng Yao rowing hard while Qian Hung sits back comfortably. She tells him he should help row too, but Qian Hung responds that losing in this silly competition doesn't bother him. Suddenly, the paddle slips from Cheng Yao's hand. As she reaches for it, Qian Hung worries she might fall, and in trying to catch her, he accidentally falls into the water. Cheng Yao quickly jumps in to save him. Now they sit together on a bench, soaking wet. Qian Hung asks Cheng Yao to book a hotel for them. Cheng Yao feels suspicious, thinking he wants to take advantage of her, so she wraps herself up. But Qian Hung clarifies he only meant for her to change out of her wet clothes. Meanwhile, Wu Jun is eager to talk to Cheng Shi about their special night together. Just then, he gets a call from Qian Hung, who is ordering clothes for both men and women. Wu Jun is shocked and wonders why Qian Hung is ordering girls' clothes. Cheng Yao steps out of the bathroom after taking a shower. Next, Qian Hung gets ready to take his bath. Cheng Yao playfully teases him, asking why he seems so shy. She never expected him to be like this. Just then, Wu Jun walks in. Qian Hung playfully grabs Cheng Yao and locks her in the washroom. As soon as Wu Jun sees this, he shouts at Qian Hung, thinking he is taking advantage of Cheng Yao's innocence. Cheng Yao finally comes out, and Qian Hung insists that he wouldn't be interested in her. This sparks an argument between them. Wu Jun steps in to calm them down and learns that they both got wet earlier. After this, he decides to leave. In the next scene, Cheng Yao and Qian Hung are at home when they hear a girl's voice outside, repeatedly calling for Qian Hung. Qian Hung tells Cheng Yao not to open the door, but she ignores him and opens it anyway. Qian Hung quickly sends a message to the girl, saying she should not disturb his girlfriend because they are living together. Cheng Yao tries to explain to the girl that they are not in a relationship, just housemates, but the girl doesn't listen. She insists that she won't let Qian Hung go. After the girl leaves, Cheng Yao asks Qian Hung why he lied to her, claiming she was his girlfriend. Qian Hung explains that the girl is the daughter of one of his clients who once asked him out, but he turned her down. Now she keeps pursuing him. One day, while checking some documents, Cheng Yao discovers a file from a psychiatrist. Curious, she calls to inquire about it. She finds out that Qian Hung has been seeing the same psychiatrist for help with his insomnia. When Qian Hung arrives, he asks Cheng Yao to cook for him. She realizes that he probably sleeps well after enjoying her cooking and singing. She takes the food to his room and finds him fast asleep. The next day, Mrs. Wang's husband, Mr. Shui, visits Qian Hung with his lawyer to discuss settling with his wife. He says he is willing to pay her alimony, but he wants to keep it out of the news and the court. He shows Qian Hung the settlement letter, but Qian Hung refuses to accept it. After they leave, Qian Hung notices Cheng Yao smiling at the other lawyer. He asks her why she was flirting with him. Cheng Yao explains that he was her senior in college. This makes Qian Hung feel a little awkward, and he wonders why he is getting involved in her personal life. In the next scene, Qian Hung asks Cheng Yao to take care of her dog because he has an emergency. Cheng Yao hides the puppy in her room since she knows her boss doesn't like pets. When Qian Hung comes home, he notices a puppy smell, but Cheng Yao quickly says it's coming from a toy in his bag. He warns her not to even think about bringing a puppy into the house. Suddenly, the puppy starts making noise. Qian Hung hears it, and Cheng Yao tries to cover by saying she's making the noises herself. He begins knocking on her door. When Cheng Yao opens it, the puppy rushes out and jumps at Qian Hung, which surprises him. He tells Cheng Yao to leave the house with the puppy, but she argues that if she goes, who will help him with his insomnia. Qian Hung is shocked and asks how she knows about his insomnia. Finally, he allows Cheng Yao and the puppy to stay. In the next scene, Mrs. Wang visits Cheng Yao and, sounding emotional, tells her that her husband is sending her threatening letters. She asks Cheng Yao to call him and tell him to stop. Cheng Yao calls Mr. Shui and tells him not to threaten his wife. He claims he isn't threatening her, but wants to solve things peacefully. Cheng Yao insists that he meet her in court. Later, Mr. Shui comes to see Cheng Yao, wanting to talk but she ignores him and walks away. In the next scene, Cheng Yao learns that Mr. Shui has tragically jumped from a building, 
leaving a note saying that his wife's lawyer, Cheng Yao, is making things worse between them. The next morning, Cheng Yao finds out that Mrs. Wang has hired a new lawyer and is holding a press conference. During the conference, Mrs. Wang claims she could have reconciled with her husband, but Cheng Yao was too selfish and put up walls between them. Cheng Yao is shocked by these words and decides to handle the situation on her own. She rushes to speak with Mrs. Wang, but her lawyer arrives and blames Cheng Yao for Mr. Xue's death. Just then, Qian Hung arrives and protects Cheng Yao, taking her away by holding her hand. At home, Cheng Yao has cooked seafood for Qian Hung, and he is happy to see it. However, Cheng Yao feels very down because people are criticizing her on social media. She also receives a threatening call, but Qian Hung grabs the phone from her hand and suggests they go out for a drink to help her feel better. After that, we see that Qian Hung has called someone to meet Cheng Yao. This person is Mr. Xue's lawyer, Lu. He explains that Mr. Xue was actually a victim. His wife falsely accused him of domestic violence, which led him to feel very depressed. Lu reveals that Mrs. Wang trapped Mr. Xue for his business. When she discovered that his business was not doing well after they got married, she decided to ruin his reputation. Cheng Yao realizes that Mr. Xue did not take such a drastic action because of her. In the end, Qian Hung suggests they go for a drive to help Cheng Yao relax, but this is her first time driving such an expensive car. As they drive, people on bikes, bicycles, and even pedestrians pass them, which makes Qian Hung frustrated. The next day, when Qian Hung returns home from work, he finds Cheng Yao sleeping on the sofa. She wakes up easily at any sound, scared that someone might come to harm her. Since she didn't even go grocery shopping, Qian Hung takes her to the supermarket. While there, he accidentally bumps into a heavy-set woman, and he is about to argue with her when Cheng Yao stops him. Some girls see them together and start gossiping, saying that Qian Hung looks very handsome and rich, but Cheng Yao looks very ordinary. Qian Hung hears their comments and begins to pay more attention to Cheng Yao. When they get home, he tells her that if she feels like crying, she should go ahead because hiding her tears makes her look less beautiful. He then hands her his handkerchief, Cheng Yao wipes her tears and knows with it, but then Qian Hung casually mentions that the handkerchief costs 8,000 yuan. Hearing this, Cheng Yao starts crying even more. The next day at the office, Cheng Yao discovers that everyone who had been criticizing her on social media is now apologizing. Qian Hung has helped resolve the situation. He gives her a stack of papers to shred to keep her distracted. Later, when Cheng Yao returns home, she finds the house in disarray. Qian Hung pretends that the dog made the mess, but he actually wanted to keep Qing Yao busy so she wouldn't have time to cry. As she enters, Qing Yao notices the mess again. Qian Hung blames the puppy, but she becomes suspicious when she sees banana peels scattered on the floor, which the puppy couldn't have eaten. She starts scolding the puppy, but her words are really directed at Qian Hung, hinting that someone seems to be setting a trap. In the next scene, Qian Hung encourages Cheng Yao to exercise to help lift her spirits, but she gets tired quickly. Qian Hung scolds her, saying that her intelligence and strength are both lacking. Then a foundation show begins, and for the first time, Qian Hung looks closely at Cheng Yao, noticing how beautiful her eyes are. However, he jokingly says that her eyes look like her dogs, which makes Cheng Yao angry, and she storms off. Meanwhile, Cheng Shi visits her mother-in-law with her ex-husband, Deng Ming. They pretend to be a couple to avoid upsetting her before surgery. Once outside, Cheng Shi scolds Deng Ming harshly and reminds him of his past mistakes. Deng Ming still hopes to win Cheng Shi back, but she has no plans to give him another chance. In the next scene, Qian Hung meets a girl named Dong Min, who has been pursuing him. She wants to hire him for her parents' divorce case, but also flirts with him. Qian Hung firmly tells her he is not interested and takes her case, but assigns it to Cheng Yao. Cheng Yao meets Dong Min's father, Mr. Dong Shan, to discuss the divorce. He tells her he has cancer and does not want his wife to become a widow, so he wants a divorce. Cheng Yao doesn't believe him and starts to follow him. She soon discovers that Mr. Dong Shan's mistress is pregnant. He reveals that he wants the divorce because his mistress is expecting a son who will be the heir to their family. Later, when Qian Hung returns home, a guard informs him that thefts have increased in the area and he should take precautions. He goes to his apartment and finds that neither Cheng Yao nor his puppy is there. 
After waiting a long time, he starts to worry and decides to find them with the help of some guards. Meanwhile, Cheng Yao is out walking her puppy. The puppy slips from her hand, runs to Qian Hung, and starts licking his face. Qian Hung is very angry. In the next scene, he is sitting at home, still upset, while Cheng Yao cleans his face. She apologizes, explaining that her puppy is innocent and just showing love. Instead of staying angry, Qian Hung forgives her. The next day at the office, Qian Hung and Cheng Yao receive the sad news that Mr. Dong Shan has died. They both go to his funeral, where Dong Min's mother tells them she doesn't want anyone to know that she and Mr. Dong Shan were planning to get a divorce. She believes it could harm his reputation and affect the family business. On their way back, Qian Hung tells Chun Yao that Dong Min's mother hurried the funeral because she knew her stepson was on the way. She doesn't want to share her husband's property with the child and wants to keep the baby from being recognized as his legal son. In the next scene, Qian Hang's puppy is playing on the sofa and Qian Hung is getting very annoyed. But after a moment, he looks closely at the puppy's eyes and feels as if it resembles Chun Yao's eyes. When Chun Yao returns, she sees that Qian Hung has put a blindfold on the puppy to keep it from bothering him. She asks him what he wants for dinner, but Qian Hung decides they will go out and she will treat him. He takes her to his favorite restaurant, which is very expensive. Chung Yao suggests a different place, but Qian Hung insists on ordering her favorite food. Later, Qian Hung messages Chung Yao to say he has sent her money for dinner. He adds that he doesn't like accepting treats from girls because they tend to get too close. Cheng Yao is shocked by this message. The next day, Cheng Yao buys ice cream for both herself and Qian Hung. After tasting one of the ice creams, she sets it aside and tells Qian Hung she got some for him too. He initially refuses but then picks up the ice cream and starts eating it. Cheng Yao notices he ate the one she had tasted but keeps quiet, leaving with a smile, thinking they just shared a kiss in a way. In the next scene, Cheng Yao takes her dog for a walk. A man with his female dog approaches, and soon Cheng Yao's dog starts playing with his dog. The man suddenly accuses Cheng Yao of harassment and demands money for compensation. Just then, Qian Hung arrives, transfers the money to the man, and reveals he is a lawyer who has recorded the man's attempt to blackmail Cheng Yao. The man, shocked, returns the money and quickly leaves. Cheng Yao asks Qian Hung why he showed up. He replies that he came to remind her she forgot to take out the trash, but Cheng Yao suspects he was actually following her. She tells her friend Tanning about it, and Tanning suggests that Qian Hung might be interested in her. Hearing this makes Cheng Yao very happy. The next day, a girl arrives at the office looking for Qian Hung. One of Cheng Yao's colleagues, Bao Rue, comments that the girl must be having an affair with their boss and is also pregnant. He approaches her, pretending to be Qian Hang's lawyer. However, Qian Hung appears and takes the girl with him. This girl is Shenna, Mr. Dong Shan's mistress, and she wants to claim her son's right to his father's property. She asks Cheng Yao to be her lawyer. Cheng Yao dislikes Shenna because she believes the mistress has harmed Mr. Dong Shan's family and now wants to claim what she thinks is rightfully hers. Hearing this, Qian Hung gets very angry at Cheng Yao. He scolds her for letting her emotions affect her judgment explaining that the child hasn't even been born yet and deserves a right to its father's property. Despite his reasoning, Cheng Yao refuses to take the case. In frustration, Qian Hung tells her that if he had known she would be so unprofessional, he wouldn't have hired her. He reveals that he only gave her the job because Wu Jun insisted, as he has a crush on Cheng Yao's sister. This hurts Cheng Yao deeply. Later, after work, Cheng Yao decides to stay at a hotel instead of going home. She cries a lot in her room. Meanwhile, Qian Hung regrets how he spoke to her. He tries to call and message her, but she doesn't respond. The next day, Qian Hung tells Wu Jun what happened, admitting he scolded Qing Yao and mentioned her job was due to her sister's connections. Wu Jun gets angry, realizing that Cheng Shi will also be upset with him. He calls Cheng Shi to explain the situation and asks her to talk to Qing Yao. Later, Cheng Shi visits Cheng Yao at the hotel and reassures her that she earned her job through her own hard work, not just because of connections. This boosts Cheng Yao's confidence, and she decides to return to the office to prove herself. Just then, Cheng Shi receives a call from Wu Jun, but ignores it. Wu Jun becomes frustrated, 
thinking that Chang Shi is avoiding his calls because of Qian Hong. Qian Hong listens quietly, taking it all in. Now back at the office, everyone is in a meeting discussing how to prove that the baby in Shen's womb is Mr. Dong Shan's. Cheng Yao suggests they check the baby's DNA since she is Mr. Dong Shan's stepsister. However, Chin Hung points out that Mr. Dong Shan's father is still alive, so they should do a DNA test with the grandfather instead. Chin Hung praises Cheng Yao for her idea, surprising everyone in the room. It's the first time they've seen their boss compliment someone. After the meeting, Cheng Yao and Chin Hung exchange glances at their desks. At the end of the day, Chin Hung approaches Cheng Yao and asks if she will come home with him. Still feeling hurt, she declines. Later, Chien Hung messages her, saying he has prepared some documents for the case and asks her to come pick them up. Cheng Yao returns to the apartment to find the documents, but also discovers a note from Chien Hung, saying he is going back to his villa and that she can stay in the apartment. Chien Hung watches from his car as the lights in Cheng Yao's room go off before he finally leaves. The next day, Cheng Yao goes to meet Dong Min's grandfather with one of her colleagues. They want to convince him to take a DNA test. Qian Hung secretly follows them. When they start talking to the old man, he surprisingly agrees quickly because he wants a grandson to help manage his property. The following day, the DNA test results arrive, confirming that the child in Qing Mei's womb is indeed Mr. Dong Shan's. Everyone is shocked when they see Qing Mei's boyfriend come to pick her up. Later in court, the same case is being heard. Qing Mei wins the case and asks Qian Hung to have dinner with her, but he declines. After court, Dong Min gets angry with her grandfather, asking him why he wanted a grandson and why he agreed to the DNA test if he loved her. The grandfather starts hitting her with a stick, but Cheng Yao steps in to protect her, hurting her hand in the process. Qian Hung quickly bandages Cheng Yao's hand, but she feels shy about it. He reassures her that he's just helping because she got hurt at work. That night, Qian Hung sits alone in his villa, unable to sleep. Meanwhile, Cheng Yao enjoys a late-night TV show. Suddenly, she hears a knock at her door. It's dark outside, and the figure wears sunglasses. Cheng Yao thinks it might be a thief, but when she hears Qian Hang's voice, she realizes it's her boss. Qian Hung explains that he left a pen at her place and has come to retrieve it. He goes to her room to look for the pen, but he secretly hopes to hear her sing. After a while, he comes out and tells Qing Yao it's late and he shouldn't be out at this hour. However, Cheng Yao had already ordered a taxi for him, which makes him a little sad as he leaves. The next day, Qian Hung arrives at the office wearing sunglasses. After a meeting, everyone begins to leave. Thinking he is alone, he takes off his sunglasses, but at that moment, Qing Yao turns around to ask him something and discovers the dark circles under his eyes. She realizes he came to her house because he couldn't sleep. Just as she is about to invite him back home, a colleague arrives and takes her to a party. Later, Cheng Yao receives a call from her mother, who says she is coming to visit next week and will stay with her for a few days. Cheng Yao is excited and thinks it's good that Qian Hung moved out before their visit. While she is at home, Qian Hung calls her, saying they need to go out of town for a case the next day, so she should pack her bags. Cheng Yao agrees and invites him for dinner. That evening, they sit together for dinner. Cheng Yao plays a horror movie to scare Qian Hung and make fun of him, but she ends up getting scared herself. Afterward, Qian Hung decides to stay the night, saying the airport is closer than his villa. Cheng Yao goes to her room to sleep, but she feels scared thinking about the horror movie. Suddenly, strong winds blow and the lights go out. Terrified, she rushes to Qian Hang's room and asks if she can sleep there. However, Qian Hung misunderstands her intentions and jokingly threatens to file a sexual harassment case against her. Cheng Yao tells Qian Hung that she just came to ask him some questions. He agrees to answer her. As she starts asking her questions, her phone slips from her hand. When Qian Hung picks it up, he sees that Cheng Yao has saved his name with a cute nickname. This makes him angry, and he asks her to leave his room. Cheng Yao explains that she watched a horror movie and feels scared, so she asks if she can sleep in his room. Qian Hong reluctantly agrees. What do you think will happen next? Don't miss part two, where the drama intensifies. So the moral of the story is, never underestimate the power of a good song and a messy apartment. They might just be the secret ingredients to landing a job and a neighborly romance.